Yeah, this one's definitely a lot more casual than the last one. Um, not Olympics based. I know the last time we did this was Olympics based and, and uh, you had some great information. I mean, we can pop into that a little bit, but it's not the focus. So today we have on Reed Trimble. IGNT. Oh, I always forget. Is it IGNT or Ignite? It's Ignite, yeah, right? Call it, it's Ignite, but IGNT IG just sounds also. sweet, man. I don't know yeah. why it is. Fortune IG, 500 I'm... company. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, ticker symbol IGNT Consulting, exactly. uh, New Media Group, Rumble Gaming. Uh, Reed is an esports aficionado, and uh, he's been doing it for a minute now, right, man? Yeah, yeah, been doing it. Uh, I've had my consultancy now for almost two years, so time has flown by. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, been gaming all my life. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good that we were able to make something out of, you know, eating Doritos and drinking Mountain Dew in Lots. my basement when I was 13. Right? Lots of Mountain Dew, man. Oh my God. <laughs> it is super. I don't know if it's uh it's stereotypical, but yeah, that's exactly what I think of Doritos and Mountain Dew hundred percent. It is. The stereotype is still there. I mean, the industry is trying to change that. Uh, I'm trying to change that. A lot of athletes, uh, and I do call them athletes, aren't Absolutely. You know, drinking that sort of stuff anymore and, and eating that sort of stuff. Um, but we were all there at one point. Mm -hmm. so. You know. As I mean, hey, you were 13, of course. Like that's all I drank was soda yeah, and ate exactly. junk. Like that's <laughs> exactly. all it was, dude. Like exactly. you'd, especially in the summer, like you'd wake up at like 10, play video games for like six hours. Your mom would yell at you. You'd pretend yeah. to go outside. I remember one time I actually was I was in the middle of like this SpongeBob SquarePants game. Just got it. Terrible game. One of the worst games I ever played. But I was like, I realized how quickly I was about to get to the end. My mom's like, No, you got to go outside. And I was like, Okay, I'll go outside. I literally took the controller put it through the window That's amazing. and played the game through the window because I was that close to beating it. And I was, That's it, iconic. That's iconic. Yeah. But the game was terrible. <laughs> yeah. The game was well, terrible though. It was well, trash. You clearly found some great joy. I did. So. I and did. SpongeBob is a, is a classic franchise. You can't exactly. really wrong, right? Exactly. We were actually, uh, we were watching SpongeBob the other night. It was like 1230 oh, at night. Me and my buddies are hanging out. All the football's yeah. over. What do you guys want to watch? Uh, I don't know. Want to watch SpongeBob? Yeah. Why so we, not? we popped Full back circle. to the well. We popped back to the first season and watched a couple episodes. Man, that That's is the awesome. best. But um, no, man, I'm really excited for this conversation. Just as much as I was for the last one, it should be a lot of fun. Um, but the first question I want to ask you, which I started asking everybody, I guess, kind of off the cuff, and I'm going to roll with it. Where does your love of sports come from? Uh, well, my love of traditional sports, call it, because I am what. I could say as a dual sport athlete. Oh, ooh, um, oh slow yeah, down. Here. Oh my goodness. Uh, the next so, Kyler uh, Murray. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, I wish um, that would be nice to get, uh, you know, $6 million paycheck from the MLB and then turn it down to, to go to the NFL. But, it would be cool. Yeah. It would be all right. It would be all right. Um, so I, yeah, I mean like growing up uh, video games, if I wasn't playing video games, I was, I was playing sports. So, uh, definitely enjoyed my fair share of, you know, hockey and skiing and, and other uh, competitive sports that way. But um, yeah, I, I think video games is like, it, it's a competitive environment. Um, you know, that's why esports is a thing. That's why uh, people sit and spend 12 hours playing League of Legends, trying to, you know, grind a, a quote unquote ladder um, of, of, you know, competition. Um, so I think that part of video games has always you know um been calling to me as well as i do enjoy immersive experiences so playing games like skyrim or single player games where you know all of a sudden you've sunk 10 hours in and you're like what the hell just happened uh for me that's quite enjoyable uh and it's a nice break from reality i know that sounds like super nerdy um but you know it, it's it's uh it, it, it's interesting and and i think the studies now are coming out that video games can be used as stress reducers rather than um you know things that other people have kind of mentioned as as you know violent tendencies mm -hmm. come from video games and stuff like that just the research isn't there uh so it's it's a mix you know i definitely pay my fair share of competitive games i i enjoy those single player games but uh it's also been a really great way my brother is kind of you know, while I'm an extrovert, he's an introvert. Uh, he's a, he's an engineer, you know, going on to solve like rocket science problems. And I'm not like that. So we have a level ground because we both play video games. We both compete at the same level. So it's nice to have that connection. 
Um, and that's kind of why it's always been a big part of my life, both competitively and, and um, from an enjoyable perspective as well. I love it, man. I mean, that's just like, a, it, it is, it is so true. Like there is a video game that two people can connect upon anywhere, sure. right? Like it, somewhere, whether it's a sports game, whether it's a game like Skyrim, yeah, where, whether yeah. it's Madden, Super yep. Smash Bros, the amount of time I've played uh drunk driving on mario kart oh my god game it's incredible so yeah um yeah it's 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 a special thing and like i think i i don't like you know everybody's a gamer if you if you play crandy crush on your phone you're a gamer so Mm -hmm. you know the whole stigma of gamers being nerds and gamers you know all that sort of stuff is is completely false um so yeah that's, I, that's kind I of do nice. think I think a lot of that honestly is going out the window at this point. And also, I'll tell my mom that she's a gamer. She loves Candy Crush. But <laughs> I, I really, I really do think a lot of that stuff is going out the window. Like, I mean, there again, as we were talking about stereotypes before, there are definitely some stereotypes. So when you see somebody that fits it, hey man, it is what it is. Stereotypes for exist sure. for a reason. We don't believe all of them, but again, they're there for a reason. But I really do think, and and obviously, you're further in it than I am, or or maybe it's because I'm further away from it that that I see it this way. Is, you know, I really don't see that too much often anymore. Like I, I don't have those conversations with the people. Maybe it's my friends, but even if I'm out at a bar or out somewhere with people that I don't normally see on a daily basis, like you rarely, at least I don't see or hear those conversations really going mm-hmm. on anymore. Is that something that's still kind of hanging over the industry still? It uh, sounds like. I would say in the last couple of years, like it's taken leaps and bounds. Um, the, Fortnite really broke that barrier. Yep. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I think from a cultural standpoint, it was probably the most relevant game of a decade. Um, you know, the fact that Ninja now has an Adidas deal. I saw that. Super Bowl commercials. Yep. He now like, like just today, he announced his own Fortnite skin. Like that is cool brands that brands and, and icons and stuff that, that are cool in a traditional sense um, are now involved in the gaming industry involved in gaming so uh you know the the best example possible is when he played with drake like who would have thought drake would play some weird shooting game with a guy with blue hair on like a platform called twitch like what that doesn't make it you know that that was like that's insane yeah Um, so I think that game really broke down a lot of barriers and, uh, also just, you know, the younger generation, they grew up on their phones. They grew up, you know, not watching cable television, but watching OTTs and, and, uh, a lot of that is revolved around gaming. So as they grow older, as they create their own media, as they create their own content, gaming is cool. And, uh, it's, you know, again, just a matter of time before, like, honestly, it's, in you know five or six years they're gonna there's gonna be no stigma and actually it's here now like the mlb mm-hmm. the all these traditional sports are struggling while there's gaming is mm-hmm. so yeah uh, it's yeah. more about it's more about it's more about the brand side and 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 making sure that they're they're understanding that uh you know it is just as valuable to your brand to partner with uh you know ninja as is obj right Mm -hmm. those are two similar sort of celebrity status yeah Um, and that's something i try to educate people on on a daily basis although you know when you're a 60 year old executive who uh watches their grandson or their son play uh 12 hours of video games a day it it tends to kind of skew the um view of Mm -hmm. how gaming can be a positive impact on somebody's life yeah, and that that I can see, uh, especially as you said, with with those sixty year old executives, or I mean, even the forty five year old executives that don't have kids, or or their kids are too young or they're too old, kind of thing. Um, I do think that, you know, as you said, you know, OBJ and Ninja, there's definitely their celebrity status. It's obviously different demographics, but at For the same sure. time, it depends on who you're going after. And if that's the demographic you're going after, I mean, there's literally no one better at this point in time, at least I can think of. I mean, again, I don't know the space as well as you do, but just from, you know, we'll, we'll throw air quotes around traditional sports. I mean, what, what athlete from traditional sports connects with the 13 to 18 year old male and female that much? 
I mean, exactly. I, I can't really exactly. think of one, right? Like nobody in baseball, that's pretty much a sport that's a wash. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe a couple of football players, but I can't, I would say basketball most likely, yeah. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put LeBron there because now he's, I don't know, he's like 40 almost at this point. So yeah. like, yeah, he connects yeah, exactly. to me, but I don't think the 13 year olds, maybe Steph Curry, but you know what I mean? Like it's very difficult to come up with that mm-hmm. in the traditional sense. Um, and so you threw out an acronym OTT over the top. And I, that was something I wanted to bring up. Um, I wanted to have that little conversation about Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and really just social media as a whole. Um, for me personally, the first time I ever noticed Fortnite, I was it was like on uh, it was like on a barstool Instagram post, and I think it was just something funny. Like some guy was playing, and his girlfriend was like half naked in her bed, and she's like, "Are you really just going to continue to play?" Yeah, exactly. He's like, "I I gotta I gotta win," and yeah, I was just yeah. like, "What is this? This makes no sense. I don't get it." And then from there, like, I don't know what it was, but culturally it just took over. So, I mean, how, how could you attribute, you know, obviously the, the OTTs, but also the like social media effect, especially over the last two years, either towards Fortnite or really just the gaming esports industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, gaming has a very similar effect than, um, you know, traditional sports, like content that does well in traditional sports. Um, I think of pages like House of Highlights, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Barstool, Bleach Report, that sort of stuff. You you know, we're at an age where content consumption is 15 seconds or less. Um, So, you know, gaming really got popular because people started sharing their clips on these platforms. And I think to your example, um, what also drove it to another level of, of popularity is the irony of, you know, the obsession with video games and the fact that this is like hilarious that this girl's, this guy is turning down this like naked girl to play mm-hmm. a video game yeah. was like a huge trend and it kind of catapulted Fortnite specifically, but also other games to the uh, social media kind of age. And another big thing is the gaming community is very, very active on social media, arguably more than you know, the, the sports community, which is saying a lot because think of how many burner accounts like Kevin Durant, has. <laughs> um, but it, you know, they, when they see something that they like or dislike, they attack it, you know, aggressively and blow it up wherever they can. And a part of that is, is memes and like meme culture is just, you know, exploded over the last four or five years, uh, especially on platforms like Instagram and Reddit And, uh, you know, that sort of satire, that sort of comedy has always resonated in the gaming community. You know, if you're playing a game, a lot of times, like if you're doing poorly or like, you you know, whatever, similar to how trash talk happens in real life sporting events, instead of trash talk, because you're on a computer and you're not on a field, you're trash talking on the internet. You're like spamming memes, you're Um, you know, going back and forth on Twitter, like that sort of stuff. So the fact that meme culture has kind of progressed to where it is now has extremely benefited the gaming community and has been like a big part of why it's become so popular. So uh, I think just the, the, the um, evolution of social media and what like media does, what content does well is basically a perfect match for what gaming is the short you know highlight clips um that you know started in youtube in 2011 when face clan were doing like the best you know sniping montages to uh meme culture i think it just plays super super well to the gaming audience and, and the gaming demographic um which is why you've seen such uh a, you know ex- an explosion on social media and I've, I've never heard it described like that i mean obviously memes are awesome, right? Like every, who, my, my parents find memes funny, right? It's just exactly. one of those things where if the comedy is there and it makes sense, it's a picture and some words, it's very easy to, to digest. I, I just never knew that it was used as almost like a form of trash talk at that point. Yeah. Um, that's really yeah. interesting. It's, uh, it's hilarious. I mean, I, uh, League of Legends is one of my favorite games and I follow the scene quite closely and two of the biggest teams in the world, Fnatic and uh, G2, uh, if you go to their Instagram account right now, it's like legitimately all memes. And whenever they play each other or play another team, their first post is, you know, a meme of uh, either trash talking or congratulating the other team in some way. Imagine if NFL, NFL teams did that. Like it would mm-hmm. be insane. The engagement would be through the roof. That's true. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so that's kind of where, where, how I look at it is, 
you know, think of the Vegas Golden Knights are a really great example. They have a, a, a social media that's a little bit uh, edgy, a little bit, you know, um, uh, kind of in, in a different direction and less quote unquote professional. And they've seen tremendous growth uh, through their social media and tremendous engagement. Um, Gritty is also another great example. Uh, like, well, it, I, it hurts to look at him, dude. It's I know, but you know what? It's, it like, works though, 100%. He, from a marketing perspective, he is by, by far the most recognizable um, uh, mascot in probably – you know, arguably all of, all of pro sports mm -hmm. and why, because the guy's a living meme, like what is gritty? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, that sort of stuff is, is thought of and at the forefront of every social media director, every social media manager in esports and gaming. Yeah. I, it's, it's just really interesting. I've never really heard it described like that before. So it, it's uh, and it makes sense. I mean, the it's it, gaming is pretty synonymous with internet culture. Right. And that's mm. kind of memes started. And you they, do it. Yeah, exactly. Like well, you, don't, <laughs> you don't write a meme on a piece of paper. That's not how it works. So, you know, I do think that that it, it absolutely makes sense once you say it. Um, but I never, I never guessed, I never quite realized it, um, which is mm -hmm. pretty interesting. So, and then you brought up, uh, you brought up kids, um, being on their phones constantly, all these things, YouTube, uh, and these clips on YouTube. I mean, as you said, most kids now don't even pay attention to cable. They're, they're on Twitch. They're on um, Mixer now because they have to. They're on YouTube. I mean, what, what has the opportunity for free in 99% of cases, just free opportunities to watch people like Ninja play? And I'm sorry, I might know uh, Dr. Lupo, I think. I think yeah, that's another one. And yeah. that, I think that's about it. <laughs> that's all I got. But, um, <laughs> well, I mean, you nailed two of the biggest there, ones. So all right, I'm doing go. something right. Um, what has it meant for the industry as well, again, just to have these personalities front and center almost 24 hours a day and just the opportunity for anyone to just hop in and be like, I, I was literally at a friend's house the other night. One of our friends was bored. So he picked up his phone. He's like, yeah, I'm going to watch Ninja. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then that's yeah. it. Like it's, it's a, that easy. You can just watch them. So how has that really helped again, catapult the industry? So I, I mean, I, I just don't think like the streaming culture or anything would exist if it wasn't free. Mm -hmm. um, gamers are notorious for, uh, you know, expecting things for free. Um, and yeah, I mean the growth of Twitch, the growth of Mixer, the growth of YouTube as like a free platform, um, as you know, been streaming is just the future and it is really the only free form of live content on, on, in the world. Like you yeah. can't get ESPN live online for free. You can't get traditional sports online for free. Like it is legitimately the, one of the only sources of live content on the internet. Uh, so, you know, that, that trend of millennials, wanting to have free live content played right into gaming um and you know has attributed to the success of of every streamer and every platform and i think just as how we watch um you know lebron james go to work on the lakers or we watch uh you know kim kardashian on keeping up with their kardashians we have these personalities the ninjas the dr lupos the shrouds that we all watch for different reasons Shroud is, is one of the biggest creators on, on Twitch, right, uh, or I guess Mixer now. Um, but he is known as like, if there's a shooting game that comes out, he's the first person that picks it up and he's going to be the best at it. People watch Shroud because he's like, he is the LeBron James. He's the Ronaldo. He's the Messi. He's the like Muhammad Ali of shooting games. So if you want to watch the best, you watch Shroud. That's his brand. Ninja, like the guy is super eccentric, you know, like, excited you know has this brand on stream if you want to be entertained you watch ninja right mm -hmm. so each of these major streamers has kind of built a unique audience and unique uh, and place to kind of the, the content desires of every single person right um and it's just like tuning into cable if you want to watch like league of legends is going to be completely different than Fortnite, like all that sort of stuff so it's got a lot of the same synergies and the same similarities as traditional TV and, um, and sports, but it's free and it's entertaining and it's all online. And there's a community right there that you can completely engage in. And that's something that you can't do on, on TV or even on 
any sort of other platform is you can't send LeBron James a message while he's on the court and have him give you a shout out. Mm -hmm. That just won't happen. Yeah. So, and, and that has been a, a major, major, major factors uh, to, you know, these streamers being able to grow in popularity and have such strong communities behind them. Yeah. I think the the fact that it is free and the fact that it is so accessible, it's very, I think that's helped just for the fringe as well, because you're not going to get someone who's a fringe basketball fan to be like, all right, you know, I'm going to go buy NBA TV or I'm going to buy exactly. NBA league pass for, you know, whatever it is, $150. Like, no, or, like, Hey, or go on Reddit and try and find it for free. Like that's exactly. Way yeah. too much. Still probably not going to do that either because, man, getting those ads just popping up yeah, constantly exactly. in your browser is, is more work Hell. than actually just getting just, – just pay the money at that point. But, no, I mean, it, it's, it's really interesting how that has probably helped the community grow too because someone like myself, you know, I might not do it, but my cousin who plays Fortnite occasionally, if he's really bored and there's nothing on, you know, he'll hop on Twitch because he knows it's free, he knows it's there, and there's people that he likes playing games that he enjoys. Um, So I just think it's really interesting how, like, that fringe has gotten even bigger too, being able to, again, just kind of bring in more audience. And then again, you're right, it's the personalities, right? Like, those fringe people, if they then start to like the personality more than actually caring about what happens in the game, like, they're going to watch because they like that person, right? Like, I don't watch, keep going. No, no, no. Nin- Ninja can stream. Uh, I'm, and there's been, um, uh, we keep going back to Ninja just because he's, he's a good example for all of this, but there's been um, examples of, you know, top level streamers uh, stream poker games, like online poker games when they're mm-hmm. typically streaming Fortnite or they're typically streaming Super Smash Bros. And they have insane viewership. And uh, the biggest cate- growing category in Twitch right now is called Just Chatting, which is not gaming. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, lifestyle content where people are uh, doing live vlogs in the real world or working out or, you know, cooking or any sort of stuff like that. So it, it, it is transformed from not just gaming to just free live content online. So you're telling me that I should just be doing this, but just on Twitch instead. Yeah. Podcasts are uh, are a huge growing category. Like there are people watch, like we'll watch live podcasts uh you know 2000 3000 concurrent viewers that's awesome well that's now cool. i now i have to figure out how to use a twitch account so thank you so much reed <laughs> i appreciate that um but no man I, I mean i think the the industry is insane it is so interesting to watch and as you said there's so much that traditional sports can learn um just again going back to that 60 year old executive you know that that 50 60 year old guy or girl that's just been there for so long no this is working we're a 12 billion dollar sport we're a 18 billion dollar sport we don't need to change anything but forgetting that you always need to be changing with the times especially and i mean it's just insane to me that you're uh, you say it again and and you know it but once you hear it there is no free live content anywhere on the internet except essentially these places which is yeah you know like i don't think it like i grew up with tv so that never really like connected um but you said it and that's a great point if i didn't have tv or subscriptions of those those kinds like where do you get your live content and like netflix is like all those subscriptions yeah. that's not free right yeah so, exactly yeah yeah it's, but uh, yeah so it's 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 definitely an exciting time um, it's cool it's very yeah. cool and now i'm gonna be a, a, a twitch streamer maybe that's how <laughs> maybe that's how we hey, get this honestly, thing figured out a twitch streamer like it, 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 that's tell me i'm funny reed Tell me I'm funny. You're, you're hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. That, but that's a stereotype that's even being broken down even further, right? Like, like I said, just chatting is now the biggest, one of the biggest categories. So you could say you're a Twitch streamer and never have picked up a video game in your life. You know what I mean? Perfect. So I'll break the mold. Let's exactly. go. Let's you go. Champ, champion the, <laughs> the, the new movement. I love it, dude. That's too funny. Um, all right. Yeah. So we've kind of just been hopping all over the place here. I have a bunch of stuff written down. Obviously I want to get to you and what you do, but I'm, I'm having a really good time. Just, just cool. BSing. So I hope you're having a good time and I'm chilling. maybe we'll keep it at the end. We'll save the best for last, what, what Reed does and how he does it. But, um, one thing I know you and I spoke about, um, last time we did this was gaming versus esports uh and before you and i had that conversation it was essentially a synonymous to me and i'm sure it is to a lot of other people because we're not super educated so if you don't mind giving me that recap one more time just so the new people listening uh can understand exactly what the difference for is. sure for sure um so gaming at, you know as i mentioned to my example before is really any person or any uh, activity that involves 
a you know video game device so an ex like candy crush is if you play candy crush once a day you're a gamer if you're uh it, you know if you're playing league of legends 12 hours a day you're a gamer um it, it, it is very it, you know the video game industry is one of the biggest industries in the world it's bigger than the uh movie industry it's better, bigger than the porn industry it's it, it's massive and that's because everybody is a gamer like you know it, even my mom and like like you said your mom they play even if they don't pick up a console because they're on their you know mobile gaming is so huge like that's considered a game uh whereas an esport is a competitive uh environment or a competitive version of that game so y you can be a gamer like i i would consider myself a gamer but not an esports athlete i like to play competitively uh sometimes but i'm not uh, in tournaments, I'm not in organized events, and I'm not in organized competitions. That's what defines an esport is when a game can kind of break out from its original just quote unquote just for fun to uh, build a competition, build a, a competitive, a formal competitive environment where people can you know attain titles, earn trophies, and you know walk away with prize money. Mm -hmm. so, the the best example is uh, you know uh like again clash of clans is a great example they actually clash of clans has become an esport because they created an organization around it mm -hmm. whereas uh you can still play clash of clans and be a gamer mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of like um calling so calling someone who plays uh basketball you know or enjoys playing basketball, a sport, a basketball enthusiast. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, calling someone who plays, you know, basketball for a living, an athlete, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy, be, you can be an enthusiast, but, you know, not every single one of us are athletes. I can shoot hoops in my backyard um, and not quite consider myself an athlete, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. And that, that's, that's a great point. And again, when you, when you say it, it completely makes sense. Um, and, and I just like hearing it and, and making sure that people out there really do understand because, yeah, again, and, and if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ninja is, is not an esports athlete. He's a gamer, no, he content a, creator. He's right? a gamer and he's a content creator. That's mm -hmm. a very good point. It's, yeah. Yeah. Ninja is not an esports athlete. Uh, someone like, um, and your audience, you yourself can look them up. Mongrel, who plays for FaZe, he is a creator, but he is all he competes at a very, very high level in Fortnite. Um, and it, the reason why the lines get so blurred and are synonymous is because you know LeBron James. We keep going back to him, but he's a, the best example. Or even OBJ, like he's an athlete, like he is an elite athlete but he's also a content creator. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he produces content. He, he makes content through his sport and through other means that people consume that maybe aren't NFL fans, mm -hmm. just as how Ninja can, creates content that people consume that maybe aren't Fortnite fans. Whereas Mongrel, like he is the sole reason for him to play Fortnite is because he's practicing to be the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. So with, with that being said, and, and again, we keep coming back to Ninja because he's easily the most recognizable at this point, mm -hmm. especially to like the, the outside crowd. Um, do you think it's, how do you feel about him kind of being not the, like the, the commissioner, but more of like a central figurehead for the champion. No, I guess for, for esports, but also like gaming, but also esports. Cause I know he's asked questions and you and I spoke about it. You know, he was asked about, Fortnite being in the Olympics or gaming being in the Olympics. Well, that's not really his, I mean, not, not that he's here to say yes or no to it, but that's not even really his lane. So how, how do people in the industry feel about kind of him and other creators because they're so much bigger in popularity kind of being the, the force behind some of these, um, you know, esports opportunities. As yeah, well. that's a good question. I think everyone, I think gamers realize that esports is good for the games that they play. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably so vice versa, there, right? Yeah, so so it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. Whereas, you know, if esport, if he's pushing for esports for Fortnite in the Olympics, like, of course it's going to be good for him. Of course it's going to be good for his brand. Um, what people like, a lot of people don't know about him is he he was actually like the number one competitive Halo player for a very long time. So he's actually kind of been an esports athlete. So he also knows like 
what be having esports in the Olympics will do for kind of that environment and 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 the support for those those athletes because a lot of the athletes like yes there are some major marquee um, you know Overwatch Call of Duty League of Legends where athletes are being paid upwards of two million dollars a year but there's also like niche communities such as Super Smash Bros and you know Rocket League and some of these other sports that are very comparable to um, Olympic athletes, right? Like, you know, they're spending eight hours a day training and playing these games, but they're only coming away with, you know, maybe 10, 15 grand in prize money or salaries a year, similar to how like maybe a bobsled athlete is training throughout the winter and the summer. Um, and you know, if they don't win a gold medal or a medal, like they're in, you know, some serious trouble. So, um, I think gamers recognize that. I think content creators recognize that. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. And I don't mind it because like, I think any good publicity and any good, um, you know, uh, stance on esports and gaming is, is a good one at this point. Um, I think it would be interesting if like, you know, maybe someone who isn't good at the game, you know, talk about how like esports is, you know, the future and that they know, you know, that it, it's needed in the Olympics and all this sort of stuff. But uh, like I said, I, I don't want to kind of section off anyone mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right now. Like the industry is, is at a, a, a pretty, uh, you know, it's grown really rapidly, but what it needs is structure. And like, even, even the IOC as like, I'm not going to say it, but like as, as corrupt as they re- are re- reputable as they are, <laughs> um, you know, that would provide some sort of structure. And I think that's something that esports can really learn from traditional sports is, you know, how to um, build, you know, uh, revenue generating leagues that sustain players, that sustain organizations, and that sustain, um, you know, uh, viewers and, and, and sports and, and, and sports enthusiasts. So totally, uh, you know, off track, but I think, um, it, any champion for esports that it has involved themselves in a game at a high degree, or even is you know passionate about gaming in general, is uh, okay by me. Mm-hmm. And that and that makes sense. I mean, like again, like they're all they're all playing the same game, right? Like it literally, exactly, um, just at different levels. So I mean, of course, you know, I want baseball to be everywhere because I love it so much. I understand why other people don't, but you know, it's just something that I find that I'm passionate about and I'm sure other people that are passionate about it want more of it too. That's just kind of how it works. Um, so there's, there's so many different directions we can go on with this and I'm going to pick the direction of franchises. So you did say like, so uh, no, take that back. I'm going to culture. So with the, with esports and the gaming culture, like I feel like again, going back to the memes and everything, it's the internet. It's, it's supposed to be kind of, unchecked almost for lack of a better term right like that's what the internet is is you can do essentially anything you want there you can dig far enough you can throw on an incognito window and anything can anything can literally happen so with with the fact and and with the opportunities to try and as you say structure esports like is it doesn't that pretty much just go against the entire culture understanding there needs to be something but doesn't it kind of like tug and pull in the wrong direction for sure um i think like rigid structure you have to do this you have to yeah. abide by that like it isn't kind of endemic to esports because esports and gaming grew up in in the internet which is like you can do anything on the mm-hmm. internet so exactly um but i also think that it has like it needs to have some sort of backbone in order to be really successful um but it can be a backbone that doesn't look exactly like traditional sports right um a really good example of this is uh, Activision Blizzard started the Overwatch League and the Call of Duty League. These leagues are v- mirrored images of what traditional sports are. They're based, uh, teams are based in cities. Uh, you know, um, they relied on uh, branding the team as, as, as a city team so that people can get behind it, similar to all the other sports teams in the world. Um, and it seemed good success. Like, you know, I'm not going to say the Overwatch League is going to die anytime soon. And I'm really excited about the Call of Duty League. But uh, Riot Games and League of Legends took a different approach where they said, you know, we're going to section you off by region rather than, um, you know, city. And we're going to have uh, a European championship. We're going to have a North American championship. And we're going to have teams that aren't specific to cities compete. 
so that you don't you can be a fan of a team uh, that might be based in LA, but they have players from all over the world and are truly international. And you're in China, but you're cheering for them in North America. So, and, and that has seen now their game is obviously a little bit more popular than Overwatch, but it, from my perspective, in terms of uh, structure, uh, you know, value, um, absolute uh, um, support from the publisher and, and sponsors, League of Legends has blown Activision out of the water. And I think a lot of that comes down to uh, esports fans are online and they're all over the world. Mm-hmm. So having something that's like very uh, similar to, tradi- tradi- to traditional sports where, uh, uh, you know, people like you and me are used to tuning on to our local network. Like I tune on TSN, which is strictly Canadian, and I'm only watching Canadian hockey on there, right? Like they're not showing the Boston game unless they're playing a Canadian team. Mm-hmm. So that is something that is unique to sports, whereas esports is global. Esports is, was built on the internet, so fans are all over the world. And I think that's what uh, will be the like that sort of flexibility, but also structure is kind of the blueprint moving forward. Mm-hmm. But even with again, like going back to, I, I keep hate I hate to keep harping on the sixty year old you know fantasy guy that we have here, but even with the the smart people that created these games and run these companies, it's still going to come down to money in in For most sure. situations, and the people that have all the money are those. Six-year-old dudes have been doing this. They're executives, and they want to be. Cha- Everybody hates change totally. until it works, right? So they want to see, like, oh well, I want this Boston-based team because my companies are based in Boston, and I want them to get the recognition here. Totally, totally. And like again, it uh, it comes down to we'll see how this this kind of progresses. But this is a good example. Um, you know, the Toronto-based team, the Toronto Defiant. Uh, we're the only besides the Vancouver team. There's really two teams in Canada that that are like major esports organizations. Mm-hmm. They have managed in in over a year. They've only managed to secure one major partnership with Bell, which is like basically our AT and T, mm-hmm. and a, a very very small partnership with Canon the 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 cameras. Whereas, uh, you know, similar to an organization in, in the U.S. like a Team Liquid or um, someone else that plays in you know multiple esports or multiple different uh and has a franchise slot in the league of legends team they are partnered with honda they are partnered with alienware they are partnered and they have you know 10x the sponsorship revenue Mm -hmm. than uh a toronto based locally based esports team so i think maybe in the future brands will warm up to esports being a local thing and be like hey i want to sponsor you know I, I, the toronto may like i, I want to grow market in tr- in in toronto so i'm going to sponsor the toronto defiant um but i just don't think that is there yet and i think there's a lot more value for these kind of global teams that offer um you know global audiences uh because again the value of of esports right now is the, all the viewership is online mm-hmm. so and you can't really section it off um so if you know i'm tim hortons and i'm sponsoring the toronto defiant i might actually only get 10 percent or less canadian traffic on anything that i'm putting out there their mm-hmm. instagram their twitter their everything you know uh we i've done deals with canadian influencers who are based in toronto have uh you know canadian branding etc and their traffic base is seven percent canadian Uh so i i just think like you know because it's all online and because that's kind of the few like what you're getting with esports it's much harder for brands to justify that local connection because they're just not seeing it on on their audiences Mm -hmm. yeah that that makes sense um there is a tim hortons down the road from me they have some pretty good coffee pretty good (laughs) donuts but i mean yeah it's going (laughs) i mean it is it does come down to the traffic it does come down to where is that coming from so I, i totally agree with you that it makes no sense to have it be more uh city based especially considering i mean does that mean all these athletes now have to move to toronto like is it just, hey, we're just calling ourselves the Toronto, like our headquarters is here? How exactly does that part of it work? Because that seems to make zero sense then. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, 
Yes, in the future, uh, they are planning on um, moving the team to Toronto, having, you know, a team house where they, they all practice and scrimmage and, and stuff and having home games. They're actually having a home game this year at, uh, at, at Toronto for their Call of Duty team and Overwatch team. Um, but again, this is a kind of a slow rollout and people need to see the benefits of having a home game. And also if people can fill a stadium, right, can fill a venue uh, mm -hmm. at, at a home game. So that's all kind of yet to be determined, whereas the other leagues um, typically play at, out of one studio. So in uh, League of Legends, they have every, all the teams live in L.A. during the season and they play at the Riot Games studio. Um, and of course, you know, it's broadcasted online where people can watch over the, uh, all over the world. In Europe, they play in Berlin. And that was kind of the, the, the model for the first season of Overwatch. Um, but they're really, I, I, I have to commend them on breaking the mold and, and like going for these home stands because we don't know what the potential is. We don't know what the result is. And we also don't know if, you know, esports will, isn't ready to, to, to go um, live, you know, mm -hmm. three, two or three times a week. Um, so it, it, it will be a very interesting year, uh, for esports in general to see how the Overwatch League and the Call of Duty League plays out. Yeah. And I mean, Hey, good luck to them. Cause a live event, there's yeah. nothing really like it. I mean, that's, that's it's true. always so much more fun. So yeah, I mean, if it works, but again, just going back to the personalities and everything, it just seems like it's more of, um, you know, and, and Vegas, this is what everyone thought Vegas was going to be. It was like, there's so many people coming from out of town, like it's something to do. Well, it turns out there's a lot of people that live in Vegas and they really love the Golden Knights. So they're going to go to the games all the time. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to see what it turns out to be. Maybe we'll have you on sometime next year, except we'll be on the Twitch channel. That way we can get more traffic. And then that way more people will be listening to us because you said it. I'm funny, Reed. I'm funny. You said it. <laughs> um, a couple, couple other things. I don't know how much longer you have, but I have some more questions. So unless you tell me to stop, I'm just going to keep asking questions. I cool. hope that's good with you. Um, so that kind of then leads into almost my next question with, uh, TV networks and something that you personally do, you have a podcast based around esports. So first let's talk, let's talk about your podcast and like exactly what's it called? Where can people find it? And what exactly is it? Uh, so mine is called diamond scrubs. Uh, you can find us basically anywhere there is podcasting. So, you know, Apple podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, the whole nine yards. Um, we just kind of, me and a couple buddies just shoot the shit about uh, part of my French about, you know, the esports uh, industry, the gaming industry in whole, we kind of just take a stab at the biggest uh, news of the week. And then, um, you know, a recurring segment of ours is called the pog champ, which is a gaming term uh, play of the game is, is, is pog. And mm -hmm. um, we kind of in classic gaming fashion and satire fashion we we you know take the biggest fail of the week and, and kind of make fun of it on the podcast so you know Love we've it. covered uh streamers uh, cheating uh live and, and being banned we've covered um you know publishers covering up scandals we've done it all so uh it, it's kind of our way of saying you know we want to discuss what's going on in the industry and we want to be relevant, but also like let's poke some fun at the industry because that, what is gaming without, you know, memes and, and <laughs> full circle, full circle. I love it. Um, but a lot yours isn't the only one, right? Like there's a lot of different podcasts out there. I remember reading a story uh, recently, like there somebody, I can't remember who is, is legitimately developing a network. I think it's going to be on Twitch if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. They're just developing a network just to talk about esports and gaming. Like, could you have envisioned this five, six, seven years ago? I no, probably not. <laughs> right? Like um, it's it's crazy how quickly. Like I mean, you have an like you gaming and esports has an ESPN now. Like just straight up, they have an ESPN essentially. Yeah. Right? Like at that point, yeah, for sure. I, I think esports has been around for like twenty something years. So it's actually been since video games have been able to account for multiple people up on a server, like. I mean, you even look at Donkey Kong and like Pac-Man and stuff like those are kind of the, the early days of esports, but, yep. but um, yeah, I, I really think the, the fact that uh, the, the free like online cons consumption just took it to a whole nother level. And um, that's just, you know, I, I think gaming has always been there, but it took some, it took a cultural phenomenon that goes beyond gaming um, to kind of bring it to the status it is now. It's it's so cool though. I just think it's insane, like how 
how much is happening um, in such a short period of time. I mean, it, it exploded. When they say exploded, it really exploded. Um, so another reason, so going back to, you know, a huge thing that we spoke about um, a little bit earlier with, with uh, like Drake and Ninja, like who would have thought, something like that would would have pretty much stopped the internet for an entire day because if i'm not mistaken it happened like really late at night it was like a one o'clock thing on the east coast or something um and i just remember hearing all about it the next day so obviously drake's more on the entertainment side but just juju smith schuster same vein um you know all these traditional sport athletes now dipping their toes into gaming but also into esports. I don't know if you read uh, recently Jay Ajayi of the Philadelphia Eagles is now an ambassador, I think, or, mm-hmm. or is on some kind of team. I, I don't remember the article right off the top of my head, but like how cool is it? And, and what does it mean for the industry again? Just like seeing again, these huge names really starting to partner up and really, you know, going back to nerd culture and all that stuff, really throwing all that stuff right out the window. Yeah. So uh, again, it's uh, like, video games like everyone plays them and exactly i think for a long time and people were like sheltered about it but now that you know it's cool all these athletes are coming out um investing in companies like playing with people uh artists are doing it drake the migos like and and video games is just now a cool thing to do so um as an athlete you know that's something you want to be involved with and i know all most most nfl players most nba players most nhl players bring playstations they bring video game systems on the road with them to actually play against one another so and like i said at at the beginning you know video a lot of video games are competitive in nature so athletes they're competitive in nature what goes better than that so it's 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 no surprise to me that these guys are now um real champions for the esports and gaming movement and that'll just continue to 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 um you know rise as Mm -hmm. as as you know, life goes on here. Yeah, that's just going to continue to perpetuate itself. I mean, especially with, as you we were talking about before, Ninja, I think, in the uh, in the Super Bowl commercial, um, you know, just all of these things. He's one of the most famous people on planet Earth right now, and he plays a video game for a living. Mm-hmm. And not sure. even competitive, we, we found out, right? He does it for fun, um, creates content that gets a lot of people interested, and I think that's that's a really, really cool thing. Um, and, I, and I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. So, Reed, let's talk about you for a little bit. Um, I brought you on here because obviously you're very knowledgeable of the industry, which I'm very excited about because I get to ask all these questions I don't know the answer to. Um, but, uh, you know, so talk to me about Ignite. What exactly you do as the, you know, the, the owner, you're a consultant. What exactly does that mean and how do you help brands? How do you help your clients uh, really <laughs> understand the space more? Um, yeah, so I really work in two kind of verticals. On uh, one side, I'm... I'm completely educational. So um, I've been hired by PR agencies and marketing agencies to kind of evaluate, you know, um, with their knowledge of the industry and, mm-hmm. and also just teach them on the, on the basics. You know, a lot of, a lot of these people are uh, questioning what is Twitch? What is Mixer? Like, how do I even engage with this? If, if I have a brand that is asking me to do so, so I go in and kind of give them the, the, the overview and, and really teach them, you know, here are the, uh, the points that you need to hit. Here's what's important on the platform. Here's how to be organic. Um, so that's one side. And then the other side is, um, uh, again, education and strategy. So, uh, you know, going one step further with them, like actually helping them plan out campaigns, planning, uh, planning out, you know, who, who should be involved in what area and what, may, what games, what, you know, platforms should be um, tar- targeted that sort of stuff. So, uh, definitely a lot of consulting on that end. And then on the other end, I work with rumble gaming as their head of talent. So I'm, uh, you know, helping to manage and, and work with over 200 different creators, teams, uh, tournaments, etc., on strategic partnerships and, and kind of, uh, you know, molding their brand to, to fit the needs of brand, uh, of, of, you know, real brands uh, mm-hmm. that will pay the money. So uh, that's been, that's been, that's been, that's been great. And it's good for me to kind of uh, work both sides of the coin because uh, it, they, they, they help each other and I'm able to learn from, from both, uh, from both parties. So that's kind of uh, what's been on my plate recently. And um, you know, again, if just to shamelessly plug myself, if there's any, uh, if anyone is listening to this, that, you know, wants to just have a 20 minute conversation because they don't know, uh, you know, who Ninja is. That's, I, I am more than happy to do that because I'm happy that you are asking and not assuming. 
Mm -hmm. Um, That is something that I I, I see a lot of is people think that they know because they've read one article on Ninja that they know the esports industry and that they know creators and how to engage with them. And it's just simply not true. So I am never, um, you know, going to say, turn someone down if they ask an educated question, if they, you know, claim that they know something that I know is completely false. That's when I know that, uh, you know, you're not someone I want to work with. So absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. So it's something you love, man. I mean, like I love talking about sports and I love asking people questions and that's why I do this, right? Like you love the industry. Like you, you have multiple jobs literally in the industry. One of your jobs is to educate. I mean, what's wrong with having someone reach out? And honestly, everybody else listening, if you just tell Reed you have a podcast, you'll hang out with you for an hour, not even 20 minutes. You'll get (laughs) them for a little bit longer. I've done it a couple of times now. So, um, but I just think it's really interesting what you're capable of doing. So when you do look, um, so, so first off, I commend you for the educational portion. I mean, I think that's got to be so much fun. Obviously it keeps you up to date on what you need to know, but you're able to then help help others, these PR agencies, these marketing agencies. And there's a word you threw in there, organic, how to be organic on these platforms and within these, these games with these, these, this, um, pool of talent. How have you seen, like, how do they take that? Because everyone thinks they're always being organic, right? Like that's just, Hey, I'm just being me. Well, how do I be me in this specific area that we've never been in before? Do I just be me or so? So how do you kind of educate them on the organic, the authenticity, because that's what marketing is. Uh, good question. I mean, it really depends on the brand. It really depends of on course, the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, and, and kind of their, their goals. I, uh, I like to use case studies as the best example. Like I show them people, um, and brands that have done stuff really well and brands that have done, you know, not so great things. Um, and I, before I kind of allow them, like, you know, before, I really sign off on them. Uh, I, I, I ask them, you know, what are your goals? Like who do you want to engage and that sort of stuff? Because again, and I'm just going to throw this back to traditional sports. If you target an NFL audience, like you would an NBA audience, you're not going to get the same sort of response. Mm-hmm. So, and it's the same with esports, the same with gaming. Like, you know, if you, if you are, uh, head of you know if you have a marketing budget for Gatorade and you want to target um you know Counter-Strike because that's a a a really intense game it's going to be a completely different strategy than um targeting someone in Fortnite and Mm -hmm. I think that's what uh I if I can educate people on that then that's I, I feel like my job is done because now they know the difference between the two and now that they know that you know, it's not just gaming. It's not just esports. It's like you have to develop different strategies for each game, mm-hmm. each campaign and, and each audience. And I also tell them like, you know, go out and if you're really serious about esports, like hire a consultant, like hire someone that even for a couple hours, even for something um, that knows the ins and outs of that uh, target market or it, of that audience so that you really make sure that you're not, you're creating a campaign that's organic because if it's not like the gaming industry will eat you alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because meme culture and it's on the internet so they can say whatever they want to say and uh, really rip people apart, which is very, very internet like. Um, so wh- when you're, when you're reaching out to these brands or when the brands are reaching out to you, how do you kind of, I mean, you said you have over 200 people, if I'm not mistaken, talent games or uh, teams uh, events. How do you kind of make sure that the brands are getting what they're looking for, but also making sure that it actually does align with the talent correctly. Because as we talked about before, all these personalities are different. All these games are different. How do you make sure the brand, when they come to you and say, Hey, I want X, Y, and Z, does that mean you just kind of go to your list and say this, this, and this, or, or how exactly does that work? Uh, yeah. It, uh, like we all have metrics that we go by. Um, when I, if, you know, if they're looking for, brand awareness and they're say, Hey, we want to spend $20,000 on like building a brand in gaming that yes, I suggest maybe partner with X, Y, and Z influencer. That's going to give you this many impressions. Like, you know, influencer Mm -hmm. marketing is, is still kind of up in the air, but Mm -hmm. like metrics are metrics, you know, impressions, audience engagement, that's all measurable stuff. So I make sure to provide that when they ask for it. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's, it's a lot of creativity and just like, you know, 
asking what their core goals are mm -hmm. for the campaign. Um, is it to generate sales? Is it to generate brand awareness? Is it to, you know, recruit uh, people to their organization or generate leads? Like, what is it? And then try and figure out a creative solution to that um, along with, you know, metrics to back it up. Mm -hmm. And then you just, as you said before, have a pool of talent that you get to pick from um, exactly. over there, which also probably makes it a lot more fun. You can be way more creative For with sure. it, which is always interesting too. So um, Reed, man, I think, uh, I think I'm good. This was awesome. Second awesome. time around, just as fun. Uh, one more time, Reed Trimble. I'm going to do it. IGNT consulting, nice. uh, Rumble gaming, all around cool dude. Explain to me what chatting on Twitch was. So now everybody get ready because I'm going to, I'm going to try and get a Twitch count. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm here for it. it. If you need, if you need a consultant, man, you know hey, where to find it. As long as I can have the video there and it's easy for other people to sign in and I can record it and then rip it. So it can be audio. I'm in like, that's the easiest thing in the world. Why the hell let's, wouldn't I? Right. Let's do it, man. I love it. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. All right. Cheers.